We're joined now by Paul Chabot, a former Navy Reserve Intelligence Officer and former White House Senior Advisor. Paul, welcome to the show. It's good to have you. Thanks, Lindsay. Great to be with you. Okay, so Prime Minister Netanyahu has said that they will indefinitely take over the security of Gaza, but he also mentioned this, saying, quote, those who do not want to continue the way of Hamas could govern. That's right. Do you think that that's realistic? You know, I, I really do, and I think that Israel's really in a, in a tough spot here because you have a lot of the so-called free world coming down on Israel for fighting back. What we have to remember is October 7th wasn't that long ago. It was their 9-11, and so for us as Americans, obviously we should be supporting Israel, but Netanyahu really has no other choice. Remember, the strikes that killed Israelis and kidnapped came from across that border. And so that is a very violent, dangerous place, and to send in your forces to control and contain that area I think is critical for long-term survival of Israel. But also important here is we don't know what's going to happen in the weeks or months ahead. We're still in the very few days of a very difficult war. So the Biden administration has been asking Israel for these humanitarian pauses. In an interview just yesterday, the prime minister said this about those calls. Listen. Release of our hostages. As far as tactical little pauses, an hour here, an hour there, we've had them before. I suppose uh, we'll check the circumstances in order to enable uh, goods, humanitarian goods to come in or our hostages, uh, individual hostages to leave. So it sounds like he's very open to those hour or two pauses. So I think, again, this Netanyahu's in a very difficult position. Uh, what they have to be concerned about going forward is what we've seen in the military in Iraq and others, that if there ever is a pause that allows the enemy to regroup and retrench. So while we, the good folks, fight by rules, the enemy does not. They never do. And so any pause, I think, gives the enemy strength. However, Netanyahu wants to get all of those that were kidnapped back onto Israeli soil. That makes sense. So what he said is a line in the sand to the terrorists, to the evil people, turn over our people, and then we'll have a conversation. But until then, there is no negotiation. Okay, so he went a step further as well in this interview with David Muir just yesterday because there are calls for a ceasefire, which would be indefinite. He said this about it. Listen. Hamas agrees to release the hostages, then there would be a pause. Well, there'd be a ceasefire for that purpose. Uh, and we're waiting for that to happen. It hasn't happened so far. Okay. Is this an incentive for Hamas to actually release the hostages, knowing that that may mean a ceasefire? I think it would be an incentive to a rational organization, a rational people. But we're not dealing with this. We're dealing with people that brutally raped and killed women, babies, elderly. There are no rules. And so anything that is done to delay will only allow the enemy, which is Hamas, Hezbollah, and others, to continue to regroup and exploit. This is a very difficult circumstance. I'd like to see more special operation tactics to specifically target into these areas where we potentially know that the hostages are kept. But there is no easy way around this. It's going to be a bloody war going forward. And this is going to be fought in Gaza and maybe beyond. Final 30 seconds here. Uh, the prime minister said if Iran gets involved in a more significant way, that Israel's response would be very powerful. Yeah. Quote there. Is that strong enough to deter Iran from getting involved? Only 30 seconds. Yeah. No, it's not uh, strong enough. When I was in Iraq, most of our service members were killed by Iranian IEDs. Iran has a huge influence in all of these surrounding countries that have encircled Israel. So Iran may not directly do it, but they will indirectly do it through the terrorist organizations that they support. And again, America, uh, Israel and all of our allies need to stand united against evil and hold Iran accountable and responsible. It was a failure of this government to give the billions back to Iran that has helped to fund this evil, evil that's been killing Israelis ever since. Mm. Paul Chabot, appreciate your time this evening and expertise. Thank you. Yes, ma'am.